That print was made with AnyCubic plant-based resin, and you can see it doesn't handle impacts very well. And to be fair, it's not meant to. What about this uh, Elegoo water washable resin? Ah, well, that's not much better. And to be fair again, that resin isn't really designed for impact resistance either. So why do I need a resin with impact resistance? Well, I've been working on this design now for about a year and a half, and uh, it's come a long way from this original Mark I version, which was printed uh, with uh, filament as an FDM printing process. It's a dust port fitting that replaces the original on this Festool track saw to give better performance and less frustration when using the saw. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about that here because I've already made a video about that, and there's a link in the description where you can find out more. As I've been refining the design, I've also been giving more consideration to the overall impact resistance, given that it's a functional part being used to make stuff. And I guess what I'm trying to do here is get as close as possible to producing an injection molded part without having to make the tool and produce a minimum run of, say, a thousand units or something like that. So I've started using this uh, AnyCubic Tough Resin, and I'd have to say that the results have been quite incredible. Check this out. The hammer just seems to bounce off. Let's try that one again. Well, it still just seems to bounce off. Now, I'm not using a super technical method to test this. I'm just trying to replicate what might possibly happen during the normal course of working. So I'm using this metal hammer and just letting it fall on the object using its own weight, a bit like this. The hammer weighs about one and a half kilos and the handle is about 300 millimeters long. That was drop test number three and it's still looking good. Now, I think that this is a reasonable test because I'm sure that I'd still do quite a bit of damage to this saw or any other nice tool by dropping this hammer onto it, uh, or just perhaps letting this uh, drop accidentally onto a hard floor. It's something I wouldn't recommend. But this resin is holding up really well. I tried a total of seven hammer blows before I took things to the next level. The next thing I tried was to simply squash it in this machine vise. Now, in this case, the print did just squish up and then crack at the back. Now, I also tried this on a very cold day and the resin actually exploded into lots of little pieces. But this is some serious resistance to breakage. Now, what if you do actually smash it with a hammer? Let's give that a shot. I'll just get one. Let's try this one here. All right, I'll need some glasses and hopefully, um, Hopefully I won't break anything over there where the camera is, but let's give this a try. Not too bad, but let's really hit it. Okay. Okay, so it's not smash proof, but then again, neither is the saw. So overall, I think this is a great improvement. And from now on, I'll be using tough resin on all parts that need to have better toughness properties when in service. I have also noticed that AnyCubic has, at the time of making this video, just released ABS-like resin version 2, which also claims good strength and toughness for working parts, so I'm sure I'll be giving that resin a try sometime soon. Now, if you have a Festool track saw like this one and you're looking for a better solution to connecting the dust hose, then you might like to check this out and you can find more details in the description below. I hope you've enjoyed watching these tests because it's fun to make stuff and then do destructive testing. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. I'm Colin, and we'll see you in the next one.